the last video focused on um, the structure of the digestive system and looking at the general um, uh, molecules that are involved and, and how they're broken down or what specifically they're broken down into, but we didn't talk about the how. And so this video will be focused on the digestion, the digestion portion um, and specifically looking at how the enzymes um, are actually acting on some of these things and what, uh, what actually composes what we call um, these, uh, the di digestive juices or the different types of or different places where digestion occurs. So starting off, um, there's a couple of different sources that I've used here. Um, so if you are um, uh, looking at um, sources on Google Classroom, um, for this first part, it is um, the aptly appropriately named um, Digestive Juices PowerPoint. It's a single slide. Um, so the main, the key here is to understand the three places um, where digestion or the digestive juices are actually released and the glands which from where um, they're released from. So the first one that we talked about right off the bat um, are the salivary glands, uh, which are found uh, in our mouths. However, we know for a fact that um, saliva itself contains other materials other than just um, the water that's, that makes up saliva and uh, enzymes because we're told that it has enzymes. And so some of the other things that makes up these digestive juices in the mouth um, obviously water as the medium, um, but there's also many types of salts in there. Um, there's mucus. Um, and then the most important here in terms of digestion uh, would be the amylase. And so that's what you need to, and, and keeping in mind that amylase is only there to break down uh, carbohydrates. The next set uh, or the next gland that's associated with the digestive system are what we call the gastric glands. Um, just a fancy way of saying that these are the glands that are found inside the stomach. Um, and in the stomach, we know for a fact, and we do, uh, if, you, if you took chemistry, uh, we deal with this stuff all the time. Uh, again, water is the medium here. Um, do not be, do not ever write down that the medium of it is hydrochloric acid. Hydrochloric acid, the medium of hydrochloric acid itself is also water. And so it's really important to understand that the medium in which all of this is housed in is water, uh, in which you have hydrogen chloride uh, ions that are found, and which cause the pH to be as low as uh, pH 2. And so you have water, you have uh, mucus, of course, and mucus is really important here because of the HCL um, and sort of as one protective measure to make sure that the inner lining um, does not burn because of the hydrochloric acid. We have hydrochloric acid here, uh, which can cause the pH to go as low as uh, pH 2. Um, and we have one of the, uh, what we call the protease enzymes, right? So proteases, if, we, if you go back to the last video and the last uh, PowerPoint, uh, proteases are the general uh, class of enzymes that break down proteins. Um, and so just by the name, we know that these are going to break down proteins here. And then the last one, um, and it's not, it's a, it's sort of a misnomer because we know that the, the place where digestion occurs is this, is the small intestine, but from where the digestive juices come from is actually the pancreas. And so the pancreas is actually responsible for quite a few different enzymes uh, that are going to be, they get released uh, so it's released into the small intestine, um, but they're made and they are stored inside the pancreas. And so once again, um, the medium of this is water. Um, there are, uh, there's something called bicarbonate. And the reason there is bicarbonate, bicarbonate is an alkali uh, material and it is there to make sure that it buffers uh, against the acid from the stomach. Keeping in mind um, that the stomach and the small intestine are 
uh, they're they're attached together and their flow goes straight into the small intestine and so bicarbonate is there right at the beginning so it's released from the pancreas into the small intestine to ensure that the hydrochloric acid um, does not burn the small intestine so it buffers the acid from the stomach uh, and then the enzymes that are found uh, or that are made by the pancreas um, include uh, amylase, uh, lipase, and trypsin. Now, for the last two, they sort of make sense, right? So trypsin is involved in breaking further breaking down of proteins. Lipase is there to break down lipids. Why is amylase being used here again, where, whereas amylase was already being used in the mouth? Um, and this is something we're going to come to when we look at starch digestion specifically. But this is essentially breaking down a disaccharide to a monosaccharide. Right? So the salivary amylase, because it's, there's not a lot of digestive uh, activity going on in the mouth, um, it's only able to break down uh, polysaccharides in, at most into their disaccharide form. So by the time it gets to the small intestine, they're still not in the form that you need them. And so uh, it, amylase needs to be released once again um, to ensure that it can be broken down into the monosaccharide form. So the next set of materials are actually going to be found on, um, again, for ISB students, these are all going to be found on uh, PDFs. And so this um, PDF that you can that you can check, so it's none of these things, so these are straight, so you don't actually have to go to these PDFs at all. Um, so this is, uh, it's called the Enzymes PDF, if you do want to um, go there. And so we're going to go through the different types of enzymes, we're class these enzymes uh, specifically. So starting off with salivary amylase. So amylase itself, amylase digests carbohydrates. It is found in, there's two examples of this. There is um, salivary amylase. Again, one of the things about um, a lot of anatomy and physiology terms really do help you in terms of understanding where things are happening. Um, and pancreatic amylase. Uh, the source um, for salivary amylase, this is found in the saliva glands uh, in the mouth. Whereas the pancreatic am uh, amylase, take a guess, is found or is made in the pancreas. The substrate is a little bit different here. And so what you need to understand, um, in terms of the salivary amylase, um, you're going to have... Um, in both cases, you can still have starches um, uh, for both salivary and pancreatic amylase. Um, and so at, at the level of the amylase um, enzymes, um, remember that starch can be found in two forms. So we have amylose and uh, amylopectin. And that's the same uh, for this as well. Um, so the starch has to be broken down, and the starch will be broken down into maltose um, and into maltose here. So just keep in mind here that um, amylase is one type of carbohydrate, and it's going to break things down into the disaccharide. Um, the disaccharide to mon monosaccharide is going to happen, in this case, if your product is maltose, it's going to be broken down by maltase. If your product was sucrose, it would be broken down by sucrase. And, and so, and the optimal pH here, and the reason why uh, carbohydrates don't actually uh, break down in the, in the stomach uh, is because their optimal pH to break down, or the enzymes, uh, is around 7. So it's about neutral pH. Whereas in the case of proteases, um, they also have two classes of um, enzymes. So the first one uh, is the pepsin. Um, or um, in sort of a full name, it's a pepsinogen. And the other one is called trypsin. And again, what we do is a trypsinogen. trypsinogen. 
um, source. Um, we're just changing it a little bit here. So rather than the salivary glands for the amylase, this is the gastric glands uh, in the stomach. Uh, whereas for the protease, uh, it is in the pancreas. Uh, the substrate upon which this, uh, this works, um, for the first one with pepsin, uh, for both of them actually, they are going to be larger uh, polypeptides. So these would be, you know, uh, tons and tons of amino acids all put together in a straight chain. Uh, that's as larger. Uh, polypeptide um, and the product of course will be a little bit smaller uh, polypeptide so this would be a few uh, amino acids still in a linear chain but you only have some uh, amino acids so maybe three or four or so but the main the key here and it has to do with the source we know that the pH um, in, in the stomach is about two and so pepsin will only break down those uh, polypeptides that are uh, that will that can be broken down easier in a more acidic uh, environment. Whereas the protea with trypsin, trypsin breaks down. Um, uh, trypsin works um, at a pH of about seven to eight, so neutral to slightly alkali. Last one uh, we have are the lipases. In terms of nutrients, this is the last one. We also have nucleases for DNA, but the, there's not a lot of nutrition from DNA. And so we won't consider those at this point. So the enzyme that's involved here um, is lipase itself. Uh, it is created also in the pancreas. Uh, it is breaking down a triglyceride. So remember, this is a glycerol attached to three fatty acids um, and this is going to break down into the individual uh, fatty acids uh, and then the glycerol will also come off the glycerol will be recycled the fatty acids can then be used wherever they need to be used um, and again, because this is coming from the pancreas, the pH must be 7 to 8. Uh, all of the pancreatic enzymes, so all pancreatic enzymes are released. So keep that in mind um, because you do not want an acidic environment like the stomach in the small intestine. So anything that's being released from the pancreas into the small intestine will be around neutral. Um, obviously, salivary amylase has to be neutral because it's not a very pleasant feeling if you have an acid in your mouth. Um, and the only place that you're going to have acid is going to be found in the stomach. So in terms of, um, you know, we'll start with uh, this, this next page right here on page seven. Um, and just looking at um, this digestion table here. And so this is, it's, it's quite nice actually. It's like a flow chart really. Um, and it gives you an idea of how these things are um, all breaking down um, in a more, in a uh, flow chart form. So this is from, um, this file yes, table PDF. And so, uh, you have to keep in mind um, that for all of these things, for all of these nutrients at the start, so we have carbohydrates here, and we have different organs. And so if you look at the esophagus, the mouth, the things that are digested, if you look across the row, is the, in the stomach, the thing digested is the things in the, in the thing that's um, digested is, um, it, they're all digested, so called the um, and it's just, this is just layers of the small intestine. So um, direct inside of the small intestine, but then materials start to get absorbed into the small cell and then have to digest it. So we're going to talk about it. Um, but just in terms of just annotating some of this, um, you have to remember that always, always uh, uh, starting um, with polyps. So, so we're going to look at 
polysaccharides for proteins we're going to look at polypeptides we're going to nucleic acids we're going to look at dna and rna and for fat we're going to look at literally flat uh, fat globules like uh, chunks of fat and so starting going down row by row in the oral cavity the only thing that is digested down um, you can have polysaccharides right so things like starch um, so starch can be broken down by salivary amylase um, and it's going to be broken down into smaller polysaccharides or at most maltose the other thing that you can uh, that you can have is if you eat direct um, sugar sugar itself um, is sucrose and sucrose is a disaccharide and so sucrose will not be digested um, until it gets to the brush border of the small intestine so it just goes you eat it and it's not broken down it just goes straight through your stomach through your small intestine starts to get absorbed and then about midway through the layers of the, the different layers of the small intestine that's when it starts to get digested again so that's why you notice that this arrow goes all the way down to the brush border nothing goes on with a disaccharide and so once uh, these polysaccharides are broken down they're going to flow through the stomach and they're going to make their way down so with the carbohydrates there's nothing going on in the stomach polysaccharides in the lumen so the lumen is the uh, actual um, it's the inside uh, tube of the small intestine so if you were to take a cross section of this it would be the middle uh, sort of hole be going down the middle um, and so for the polysaccharides, this is where the pancreas are going to start working. Uh, they will break it down into disaccharide. And then these disaccharides are going to be broken down. Uh, you know, it's a wonder how uh, biology can be difficult sometimes. Uh, they're broken down by disaccharides, disaccharidases. Um, and one of them, in the case of maltose, would be maltase. And for su if we had sucrose from here, sucrose would be broken down by sucrase. If you have lactose, lactose is broken down by lactase. And so for people who are lactose intolerant, uh, they actually don't have the lactase enzyme or they have a malfunctioning lactase enzyme, which can't break down lactose. And so they can't actually digest um, lactose in its, uh, in its full form. And so the last thing that you get here is the monosaccharide, um, which in the case of and as you can see right here, uh, these enzymes are to the uh, pancreas. Whereas uh, the enzymes that are uh, secreted here are the enzymes that are enzymes that are stuck in the cell membrane. And if you follow along with this, one of the um, one of the functions of membrane proteins is to actually uh, function as enzymes. So these are enzymes that are actually found in the cell membranes. Um, and these are stuck in the cell membrane in the small intestine. Here. There's a small intestine a little bit later, but you can think of this as being enzymes that are stuck inside the small intestine itself. And so as these uh, disaccharides are moving through the small intestine, the chopping block can break down the bonds between the disaccharides to produce the glucose molecules. In terms of proteins, as we go down, protein just should not broken in your mouth. First place it's broken down is in the stomach. And the enzyme that low uh, which is produced in the inner wall of the stump and on the proteins into smaller peptides the peptides will make it to the actual pump by uh, chymotrypsin and then eventually they get broken down into smaller polypeptides um, and eventually just get smaller and smaller units by different types of enzymes until they become the product that we want as amino acids so they could become amino acids without getting all the these enzymes are found in different places or they never uh, left behind and so if there's some uh, polypeptides that are left behind in the lumen, as they make their way through the small intestine, they will eventually get chopped down into their amino acids. Okay, so I put a big no here. This is um, the oral cavity for the cell. Intestine have chaotic nuclei, so they'll break down. And then um, if they make their way inside the lumen, this test, uh, the chiases, literally the name with an A's at the end, will break down and phosphatases the nucleoside bases and phosphatases will break them will break down the nucleotides into the base separate sugar separate phosphate separate and then whether those parts want to be reused again is up to whatever function it is um, but that's it they all get broken down into their individual parts 
And then finally, the last one is our fat digestion, where nothing in the mouth, nothing in the stomach, um, these flat, uh, fat globules are going to be brought, uh, brought into the lumen of the small intestine, where you're going to have bile. Remember that bile is uh, produced in the liver. Um, and it's uh, released from the gallbladder. And so bile is going to make its way. It gets released into the pancreas, the pancreas, and that's going to, it emulsifies the fat into these droplets or clumps. So it breaks down a large piece into like, it's literally like um, cutting it with the scissors, but it's not actually breaking it down. You're just cutting it into chunks and then it makes it easier for the lipase to actually break it down into the components, uh, which are the glycerol, the fatty acids, and the glycerides. And that's it. And then those particles will then get taken into the bloodstream and they can be taken wherever they need to go. So that's sort of a general, um, in terms of digestion itself, looking at the four different types of macromolecules and how um, they are digested. We talked about the brush border um, right now, and we're just going to talk about um, what the brush border actually is in terms of its structure um, right at the end of this page right here. So, uh, it's an, uh, they're an odd set of enzymes in uh, the brain itself. And so, just doing a text up down. So, the brush border, which let's just uh, sort of uh, redirect ourselves here. If this is a cross section, uh, this is a cross section of the small intestine. Okay. Uh, this is the main tube. And so this inner lining, so this is the main tube, um, or what we call the lumen. And the, the, uh, the, the cell membrane that we're looking at here um, is this inner membrane right there, uh, which is the brush border. Right. And so the thing with the brush border is you have these enzymes right here that are embedded in the cell membrane. Um, and so you have some enzymes that are floating in the uh, lumen. This, these are the enzymes, so the pancreatic amylase, the pancreatic trypsin, the pancreatic nuclease, and the bile salts and the lipase, these are all found in the main tube of the small intestine. So the enzymes that are found then in the brush border, um, all the disaccharidases, the peptidases, the nucleosidases, these are all found uh, all along this membrane right here before things can go in to the small intestine. And so as you're going towards, it's, they're sort of, they're guarding as sort of like border guards and they're
ensure that uh, the materials that are going into the small intestine are the same size, the same, uh, the same type. Um, and so it's just to make sure that the right type of materials are all making their way through. So it could be that you have a maltase here, which is breaking down maltose into glucose and glucose. You might have a sucrase here, breaking down sucrose into glucose and fructose. You might have a, oh, I don't know, what do we have? Um, a dipeptidase, right? But remember, peptide bonds, um, you have a carboxyl group and a, an amino group, and those need to be broken off as well. So there's those enzymes as well. So all of these little components have sets of enzymes that are found in the cell membrane that are going to break um, these bonds. And so the brush border, um, as we call it, you can sort of remember if you use that border analogy, you can remember it that way, that these are sort of like uh, guards at the border who are making sure that the contents coming into the small intestine are the right contents. Um, so this is found in the mucosa uh, cells that line the small intestine. Um, these cells um, have enzymes embedded in them. The cells have uh, enzymes uh, embedded in their cell membrane. Um, and so the purpose of them is they're the last stop, right? So they are the last digestive enzymes. There's no more digestive enzymes after this. If there's any materials that have made it ways through um, that, that should have been digested, um, they will help have to be dealt another way. 